South Carolina's defense will be going up against a familiar face in Georgia offensive coordinator Mike Bobo on Saturday afternoon, a play caller that likes to do a bevy of different things with his unit. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I am Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast, and you can find my written work over on Gamecocks Digest on SI.com. Thank y'all so much for making the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team every day. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. This Saturday's matchup between South Carolina and Georgia, it's going to be a weird, almost family reunion for some of these coaches. Shane Beamer used to be an assistant coach at Georgia under Kirby Smart. Will Muschamp used to be the head coach here at South Carolina and now is the co-DC at Georgia. Mike Bobo is now the offensive coordinator once again at Georgia and for just one season in 2020 was the offensive coordinator here at South Carolina. And Bobo is the specific coach that I want to start off today's show with because His offense at Georgia, it has multiple aspects to it that attacks different areas of the field. So all the position units for South Carolina's defense will have to be on their A game on Saturday afternoon. There are three specific aspects that you all need to know about Mike Bobo's offense. Let's start off with probably the biggest staple of a Mike Bobo offense, which is a strong emphasis on the power run game. Mike Bobo, he's a bit of an old school guy at heart when it comes to wanting to establish the ground game. This is a coach that loves running 11 personnel and 12 personnel where you have one or two tight ends lined up in line with the offensive line. And Mike Bobo, he is not a coach that's afraid to run the ball inside over and over again, and also sometimes run the ball outside to the perimeter through gap-blocking schemes, which, as we've discussed several times now over the past couple months, is assignment-based blocking where one offensive lineman is assigned to a specific defender, and that's the way it is across the board. So, Because of the fact Mike Bobo loves to run the football through a power run blocking scheme, what does this mean for South Carolina's defense specifically? Well, the defensive line is going to have to win their one-on-one matchups up front. I have lamented for the past couple weeks that I feel like that this is a unit that somehow, some way, has got to figure out a way to cause more disruption in the backfield. I understand that with the way today's game is played, with the quick passing game and also a bit of a mixture of up-tempo on that side of the football, it's not going to be quite as easy as it once used to be for a defense to rack up tackles for loss and sacks. But South Carolina's defensive front has still left a little bit to be desired in terms of wreaking havoc and creating negative plays in the opposing team's backfield. That cannot happen again against Georgia's offensive line. But could the Gamecocks find success here? Absolutely, because I went back and watched how Georgia's offense performed against Ball State in Week 2. And when watching this game back, the thing that really kind of stuck out to me was that Georgia's offensive line actually seemed to struggle to get a consistent push across the board against Ball State's defensive line. And that's unlike anything we've seen with this Georgia offensive line for the past several years, a group that's become known for their physicality and, quite frankly, their ability to just blow people off the line of scrimmage and drive them back sometimes five-plus yards down the field. They weren't doing that against a Ball State team. And I understand 
They're going to come out and motivate this week to try to change all of that. But South Carolina's defensive line, I mean, come on now. You have to imagine they're going to be much better than what Ball State offered on the field this past Saturday in Athens. With guys like Tonka Hemingway and Alex Boogie Huntley, TJ Sanders manning the interior, and also some veterans on the outside, guys like Jordan Strawn, Brian Thomas Jr., and plenty of other dudes as well. The Bulldogs also have multiple running backs that are currently dinged up right now. They've even played a wide receiver at running back. There's even been discussion that if the injury situation gets to a certain point in the backfield, that Brock Bowers could even be a guy that could get some looks back there. That might halfway be a joke, but at the same time, it also sounds kind of halfway serious. That's just how bad things have gotten in terms of the overall health status of Georgia's running back room. But nonetheless, Mike Bobo, he's going to want to establish a strong power run game in this contest. That's just what he always likes to do with his offenses. Now, another thing that Mike Bobo likes to do is attack the perimeter. This is something that partly led to South Carolina getting blown out against the Georgia Bulldogs this past season because... Going to this game last year, the secondary admittedly was pretty banged up. Multiple backups were starting, including multiple true freshmen. And so Clayton White decided to play a bunch of soft zone coverage, and he essentially just gave the Georgia Bulldogs offense the flats. Basically, the area on the edges of the field right in front of the line of scrimmage. And Todd Munkin gladly took that, and the Bulldogs just absolutely sliced and diced their way down the field because of that. Georgia is not afraid to run quick hitches. They're not afraid to run play-action bubble screens with some jet motion. There's multiple different things that they'll employ out there on the edge near the sideline. So what does this mean for South Carolina? The secondary has got to be aggressive and physical with Georgia's wide receivers. Something else that I noted when watching this Ball State game that Georgia played last weekend Georgia's receivers were inconsistent in terms of setting the tone in terms of perimeter blocking. These guys, more often than not, seem to receive the hits more so than actually dishing it out. So, if South Coast defensive backs keep their heads on a swivel and they see these perimeter passes unfold in front of them on Saturday, if they could just get the jump on these wideouts, quite frankly, I think South Carolina they have an opportunity to blow up some of these perimeter passing plays and therefore make life a bit more difficult for Mike Bobo's offense. One last aspect to keep in mind with Mike Bobo's offense is Mike Bobo, he's not going to try to win the game with three yards in a cloud of dust. He is also willing to take his shots. He is willing to call a bunch of play action plays in order to try to open up some deep passing routes down the field. He is not afraid to keep six people, sometimes seven people back there in the pocket to protect his quarterback in Carson Beck and give him time to progress through his reads and make the proper decision. So... For South Carolina's linebacking core, they have got to maintain strong eye discipline in this game because Mike Bubble also, for the most part, will typically always have at least one guy that does not run all the way down the field. Maybe somebody runs out to the flat or somebody just simply runs maybe a quick hitch or a spacing route in the middle of the field where they just try to find open grass and they sit there and wait in case Carson Beck's got to check it down because he doesn't like what he sees deep down the field. Linebackers have got to look out for that, and at the same time, defensive backs have got to win their one-on-ones. And again, with this secondary, the talent they possess, and the coaching they get from Touring Gray, you have to like your chances for South Carolina if they can just, again, win those individual matchups on the back end. So, those are the three main things to watch with Georgia's defense. Strong emphasis on the power run game, a willingness to attack the perimeter, and also a willingness to take shots down the field. The only area of the field that Mike Bubba won't attack very often is the intermediate part of the field, but you don't have to to win a football game. Point being, this is what you'll need to watch out for on Saturday afternoon when the Gamecocks defense is out there on the field in Athens. 
Now, there is one other aspect, specifically possessed by quarterback Carson Beck, that could end up playing a role in this football game. One that South Carolina has got to show improvement in compared to what they did last year. And I'm going to discuss that in a little bit more detail in just a couple moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Now, obviously, South Carolina has proven once before that they can pull off the massive upset against the Bulldogs in their own home stadium. They did it back in 2019, and I know that every Gamecock fan that was in attendance probably had the time of their lives that day. If you're someone that thinks that maybe South Carolina could pull off the almost improbable once again this year, and you're worried about maybe missing out because you wait too long, maybe you wait to the last minute, you don't need to worry because Game Time's going to have you covered. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. And they've also got this thing called the Game Time Guarantee, which means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snap the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Welcome back to this Tuesday edition of the Locked On Game Cox Podcast, where we cover your team every single day. Day. And as always, thank you to each and every one of you every day for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily choice for South Carolina Gamecock sports coverage. Georgia quarterback Carson Beck has definitely got an NFL caliber arm, but there's another part of his game that could play a role in Saturday's contest if the Gamecocks defense isn't careful. And that aspect that I'm talking about is his legs. When I watched the Ball State game that Georgia played this past weekend on Monday evening, there was something that I picked up on with Georgia's offense, and that was the fact that there was a lot of power run plays that looked like your typical power run plays, where you have maybe one, sometimes two pull blockers that are literally pulling to one side of the formation to act as basically perimeter blockers to set the edge collect a scraping linebacker, and try to open up a hole for their running back. But the thing that I noticed about some of these power run plays that was a bit different from some of the others was that when Carson Beck took the snap, as he was handing it off to the running back, he was staring right at the weak side defensive end in this case relative to where the play was heading. And that really caught my attention because when that happens, that typically means that the quarterback has an option in the play. The option to keep the ball for himself and take off running. Now, I saw this happen about five or six different times when watching the Georgia Ball State game on Monday. And Carson Beck, he never kept the football in any of those instances. But I think a big reason why he did not keep the football is because pretty much every time that that exact play was called, when Carson Beck was looking to the weak side of the formation, the defensive end was in the area, or maybe a linebacker or the nickel was in the area. So in essence, there was never a play where pretty much there was absolutely no traffic whatsoever on that side of the field where Carson could just keep the ball for himself and take off running. But I did see Carson Beck scramble for a couple of runs in Georgia's game against Ball State from this past Saturday. And when he did take off running, Carson Beck was pretty doggone quick. He is a good athlete. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that he is as athletic as Stetson Bennett was during his college career. I think Stetson Bennett's the better athlete. I think he's maybe the bigger running threat between the two. But the Gamecock defense cannot sleep on Carson Beck. And at the same time, South Carolina, they've got to improve in this exact area. They've got to improve in terms of defending the read option. This past year, the Gamecocks struggled mightily in some games 
in this aspect because defensive ends, despite getting a down block, which typically signals that something could be coming your way, that you might need to watch for the quarterback keeping the football on a read option, would just crash on down, run up the field, or go right at the running back and would allow the quarterback a free lane to the perimeter for a ton of yardage beyond the line of scrimmage. There was a couple of specific edge defenders that were not very good in this aspect, that constantly did something like this and basically took themselves out of position. That cannot happen this year. Against North Carolina and Furman, South Carolina's defense, they did not have to face many option plays. There was not a whole lot of read option or zone read plays called by North Carolina's offensive coordinator or Furman's offensive coordinator, despite the fact that both Drake May and Tyler Huff are very good athletes. And honestly, you could categorize as dual threat quarterbacks. Carson Beck, he kind of fits the same bill. He's an athletic quarterback. He's not going to run as maybe those guys typically would, but he can be dangerous with his legs. And you do have to watch out for the possibility of him keeping the football on certain exchanges. So, if I'm South Carolina's defensive coaching staff, I am warning the edge defenders this week when watching film and breaking it all down. Do not sleep on the idea that Carson Beck, number 15 back there, could keep the football on some of these plays and take off running for himself. That's the kind of stuff that can make the difference between maybe a drive ending or a drive being extended. It can make the difference between a drive maybe ending in the red zone and Georgia kicking a field goal or Georgia scoring a touchdown. Those kind of mistakes, to put it bluntly, can add up very quickly. So for the Gamecocks, you don't only have to account for Carson Beck's arm, but you've also got to account for his legs at the same time. Now, Carson Beck, as I clearly just went over, he's a very talented kid back there at the quarterback position. But I also think that the biggest key for this game, for South Carolina's defense, relates to Carson Beck and trying to put a lot of pressure on him. And I'm going to discuss how South Carolina could go about doing that in just a couple moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. The Dallas Cowboys smoked the New York Giants on Sunday night, winning by a final score of 42 nothing. You don't see that happen very often in the NFL, and I'm not one to typically sit here and say the Cowboys could actually win it all, but in all honesty, if you think that they could, Fantos got some enticing odds on them right now. The odds for the Cowboys are currently listed at plus 1,200. If you think the Cowboys could go all the way, well, now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel is the official betting partner of the NFL. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day in just 30 minutes. South Carolina's defense doesn't have a ton of advantages on paper when it comes to this matchup against Georgia's offense. But there's one facet of this game that they could and honestly need to exploit. And that is Carson Beck's inexperience. This has been discussed by some people during this offseason, but it's also a conversation that we need to have throughout the rest of this week. Because Carson Beck, although there's been a lot of talk about him and the talent that he does possess, he is about to start just his third game of his college career. And that is something that cannot be underestimated coming into this football game. 
What is the main goal that the defense has to accomplish when they are facing an inexperienced quarterback? They need to add pressure. They essentially need to make him feel like that he's got to go out there and he's got to play hero ball. So how could South Carolina do that? How could they add pressure onto Carson Beck's shoulders, make him feel like that he has got to be the one that makes the plays happen? Well, South Carolina can keep Georgia at or behind the sticks. Basically, like I said about the strong emphasis on the ground game from Georgia earlier in today's show, South Carolina, they cannot allow Georgia to consistently get three yards, four yards, five yards, and have a bunch of manageable second and mediums, third and shorts. They cannot allow that to happen. If South Carolina wants to put more pressure on Carson Beck to get the job done, they've got to not allow Georgia to get a ton of yards when they do run the football. So don't give up more than three yards rushing on any given play. Try to, again, create some negative plays. Get in the backfield. Rack up some tackles for loss. Make Carson Beck have to throw the football in third and obvious passing situations. Another thing that this team could do, and this is going to relate to special teams and Beamer ball here, flip the field on this Georgia offense. Force the Bulldogs to drive the length of the field. Kai Kroger, he's obviously one of the best players on this entire football team, and he has had some incredible performances, especially the one that he had against Clemson this past November. I think that Kai Kroger needs to have a similar performance again this Saturday against the Bulldogs in Athens. Georgia, I'm not going to sit here and act like the Gamecocks can hold them scoreless or hold them to like 3 or 10 points because I simply don't think that's going to happen. The Bulldogs are going to score some points on Saturday. So, if you're South Carolina, fine. They're going to get theirs. But... Make life difficult for them. Don't give them a bunch of short fields. Don't let them start from around midfield or near their own 40-yard line. Pin them deep. Make them start from their own 25, their own 20, inside the 15 or 10-yard line. Force them to basically earn the yards and subsequently the points that they get in this contest. And lastly, if you want to add pressure to an inexperienced quarterback, one that's got a lot of expectations on his plate, playing for the number one ranked team in the country and the back-to-back national champions. Keep this game close. Keep this a tight ball game, late in the third quarter, going to the fourth quarter. Make number 15 feel like that he's one mistake away from potentially costing his team the football game. If South Carolina can do that, along with everything else that I've already discussed, then in my opinion, there's a greater chance that Carson Beck will make a mistake. Maybe he holds onto the football a little bit too long. In the pocket, it leads to some sacks for these Gamecock edge rushers. Maybe he tries to force a throw that's not actually there, and he ends up turning over the football. You've got to make this kid sweat bullets near the end of this football game. Carson Beck, again, all the talent in the world, no doubt about that. And last year, he played in garbage time against South Carolina because the Gamecocks allowed him to because they did not play good in 2022. There's no question about any of that. But there is a difference between being a guy that is waiting in the wings, sitting on the bench, and knowing that your time is coming in the future and being the guy right here, right now, being the starting quarterback for a team like Georgia in the SEC, the guy that everybody is looking at if things are going sideways, looking to you to lead their team. There's a big difference there. And in recent memory, we've seen some other college quarterbacks falter when they have made that transition now, I'm not trying to sit here and project long-term that I think Carson Beck is going to like get benched at Georgia or have to transfer or anything like that. I'm not saying that, but this is his third career start. And here's the thing we also have to keep in mind. His two starts that he has had this season have come against an FCS team in UT Martin 
and one of the worst teams at the FBS level, more than likely, in Ball State. South Carolina might not be, say, top 10, top 5 team, but South Carolina has got some good ball players. They've got some ball players that can match up with Georgia's football players. South Carolina, undoubtedly, on both sides of the ball, in terms of coaching, in terms of play, they're going to have to do a lot of things right to win this game. But it's not like there's no path to South Carolina winning this game. They've proven they can't do it before. There is a path to them possibly doing it again. And the Gamecocks are going to do it again. They've got to make number 15 for Georgia feel like that he's got to play hero ball. And if they can put him in that kind of spot, then I think that there's a really good chance that South Carolina, they can find themselves with an opportunity at the end of the game to pull off another big time upset in Athens. With that being said, y'all, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I hope that y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show, as always. What are y'all's thoughts on Mike Bobo's offense? What it's going to present to South Carolina's defense? Do you think the Gamecocks defense can match up with Mike Bobo's offense? And what are your thoughts on Carson Beck? How do you think his legs could play a factor in this game? And also, do you think the biggest key for this game for South Carolina's defense is to put a lot of pressure on Carson Beck? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or shoot me a direct message on Twitter at a line underscore SC if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. Once again, thank y'all so much for tuning in. As always, have a great rest of your Tuesday and I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. <laughs>